Hi everybody, sorry I've been gone for two weeks. The channel incurred multiple strikes for leaving Lover's Lab links in the description. I made a video when it happened on MXR Plays, and so to make sure my channel had no chance of being deleted, I hid all my videos. Anyways, from now on, you might not see mod links in the description anymore. I don't trust myself to always remember to remove the Lover's Lab links. I just don't think it's worth the risk of losing my channel over something so stupid, so I apologize for my own stupidity and who I am as a person. If you're interested in a mod, feel free to Google it and find it yourself. Also, before I took the videos down, I had a sponsorship message cut short. The Spectre Custom Mouse Pad. Choose your dimensions, upload your own image, use their cropping tool, and it's that easy. A beautiful quality mouse pad, and you can get it for 15% off using code MXR. There's a link down below. First up, we have fortified and animated fort doors. Forts are supposed to be structures of defense and fortification. This doesn't even have a handle. You literally just push it open. These doors offer a level of security never before seen in the vanilla game. I mean, sure, it increases the amount of time required to open a door, but for the immersion, is it worth it? Yes. Yes, it goddamn is. I mean, sure, when you go into a new load door, it gets stuck in the unlock position and then unimmersively resets itself when you open it again. But for all other doors, it's perfectly fine, so it's perfectly fine. And we're not talking about just one four door, okay? We're talking about two whole fort doors. And if that's still too insignificant for your ungrateful ass, go to his mod page. He has all kinds of doors for you to download. Like the epic gate of Whiterun. Vanilla, that's a right. Noble Skyrim, pretty cool. Epic, epic. And this isn't 2K. It's not 4K. It's not 8K. It's 8K Insanity Edition. And this man is just hyper obsessed about doors in Skyrim which is a great thing. He described Windhelms as rapid eye cancer may jump into your face if you look at the vanilla doors too long. That's how you know this man is passionate about doors in Skyrim. Personally, I don't mind vanilla doors. I think they look fine. Until you see his door at the Misfail Keep, and then you'll be like, fuck vanilla doors, I'm downloading all of these. Now that your doors are improved, it's time to lockpick them. Sexier doors require sexier locks. And what better lock than JS lockpicking UI? I mean, this thing's so fancy, it comes with knockers. No, 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 no. N knocker, like, like a door knocker. Now, technically, this lock is assuming the color and material of the door behind it, which is clearly racist and slightly unimmersive, but sometimes you can sacrifice immersion for a little bit of aesthetics. And you remember the vanilla skeleton key, right? Skeleton key my ass. This is what the skeleton key should look like. If you're playing a thief character and you don't have this mod, what are you doing with your life? And if you're playing a thief character and you're not really good, you might also want to get Remember Lockpick Angle. I mean, not only does it make lockpicking a million times easier by placing the pick where you last had it, but I feel like it's also more immersive. Now, I don't really lockpick in real life, but I assume it's not that hard to remember where you placed your lock last. Actually, do picks even break in real life? Okay, you know what? Forget about it. Emergent aside, this mod makes lockpicking easier without completely giving you the answer every time like you're a five-year-old. But before you do your lock picking, especially in cities and towns, what do you do beforehand? You wait. And if you're like me and impatient, you can't wait for the waiting. The waiting makes you wait too long, and that's why I got the mod Faster Sleep Wait. Mod that decreases the time between hours by 70%, so you don't have to pull your hair out while you wait a whole 24 seconds before you continue playing your game. I mean, I guess the purpose is to allow you to feel each hour going by, but honestly, ain't nobody got the time for that, or the attention span, especially when we have a smartphone on our desk with access to all the world's memories. And sure, it allows you to cancel, but really just choose the right amount of hours in the first place or have a faster reaction time. You little bitch, I'm kidding. Now if you're really like ADHD level of attention span like I am, right just off the record, don't tell anyone I said this, type in TFC before you choose the hours, and then it'll go by instantly. You're welcome. Now let's say you waited, but you're also a blind idiot and a guard still caught you. You look at the guard and think to yourself, wow, you look exactly like every other single guard in Skyrim regardless of hold. What is this, Star Wars Attack of the Clones? And then you download Guards Armor Replacer, a mod that takes into account geography. 
Level of prosperity. Cultural influence. The level of thoughtery, I'm kidding. Have each hold and gives them new sets of armor. So the guards of Winterhold will no longer be wearing short sleeve, chain mail, and absolutely nothing at all in the cold, harsh winter of- Wait a minute, what? Wear your clothes, and instead wear something more warm and fitting for the climate of the area. I mean, Markarth is a city built by Dwemer. There's probably plenty of Dwemer scraps around to make armor out of. So why wouldn't they? Windhelm is another called- Why are you all naked? Why? Okay, forget about it, guys. Let me- let me redo it. Windhelm is another cold city. And so they should of course dress appropriately for the weather. Solitude is the richest city and they can't be seen wearing the same peasantry plebeian armors the other holds would be rocking in theirs. Thus, they all look like fancy knights, which is very cool. Same can be said about Whiterun, but just less fancy because Jal Balgruff's a bum. And besides guards, even Ulfric and his officers get new armor, as well as Jal Balgruff and his brother. Not to mention the vast amount of new, unique shields is really awesome. And overall, unlike a lot of other guard armor replacer mods, these don't look silly at all and are actually insanely good. So good they could all be individual armor mods and be top files of the month. And even more important, they just look outright better than vanilla guard armor. And at the very least, you're no longer playing Skyrim The Clone Wars. Are you playing a magical character so magical you need another way to express the level of magicness of your character? Are you tired of human normal eyes? That's good, man. That's real good! Because we have star sight eyes. Man, that adds 51 new eyes and 5 types of new eyes. You know, your regular eyes, right? You're not gonna use those. Your glowing eyes, which are pretty self-explanatory, they glow. Pulse eyes, that pulse! That's it, that's that's it, it's really cool. Sparkle eyes that are glittery and pulse, but there's only two, and I'm honestly not sure which ones they are. It might be this one, it might not. I can't tell, man, he doesn't label the eyes. It, they're just numbered. And then colored, six new eyes that will change color over time. I mean, sure, they're not the most realistic eyes out there, and some of them are outright terrifying, but how many eye mods can say that they pulse or change color over time? The innovation is fascinating, and who said this couldn't happen? Skyrim's a world of magic, fellas. You ever heard of that shit? It's called imagination. We can summon flaming, breathing rocks, but we can't put an oblivion gate in our eyes? Come on! Now if you've watched the show for long enough, you're probably familiar with the mod configuration menu, or the MCM. And if you've downloaded as many mods as I have, you're bound to have run into a mod with a name so long it didn't fit in the space provided. Worry not, because we have the wider MCM menu for Sky UI, which doesn't just provide accommodation for longer titled mods, but also just kind of looks cooler in general. And if you have a line that's super long, you can just fit it in one line now. Scroll speed is also increased by two times. But that's not all. There's even a wider, wider version. I guess if your eyes are like really far apart or some shit, that's not how it works? Okay. Or a larger, wider, wider MCM. If you got like a really, really big face, I'm kidding, which allows you to see more on the screen at the same time, which will remove the title bar at the top, assuming you know where you are and what you're looking at, while removing the bottom bar as well, on the assumption that if you are using this X remote, chances are you already know the control controls to the MCM. And finally, there's just a full screen MCM for people who really, really, really like configuring Skyrim to the point where they might actually prefer configuring Skyrim rather than playing it. This has no description bar but shows it at the bottom. Unfortunately, it doesn't move the information to the center or elongate the amount of stuff shown, so everything's kind of closer to the top. So now I can just really focus and immerse myself in configuring the distribution of all males of various different races in my Skyrim to my exact perfect specifications and the demand for milk across the various holds and cities of Skyrim thanks to this mod really appreciate it. The oceans of Skyrim are largely underutilized and a massive weight of potential for a game that claims supremacy in open world exploration and discovering every aspect of the map. Because really there's nothing down there and you'd find more interesting things underneath your couch cushions than actually swimming down there and risking your life. Fortunately we have modders and if there's anything we know about modders it's that they know how to make things interesting. This is the depths of Skyrim, a mod that adds content to the sea 
of Ghosts. Now, of course, this ain't no Subnautica. There are no new Leviathans or wrecked spaceships, but you do get more flora, and it's it's just not an empty, vast desert of nothingness down there, right? There's actually stuff on the floor, which is what oceans are supposed to look like. He's added about a thousand more fish, no slaughter fish, because, well, Nobody fucking likes slaughterfish, and they're mostly just salmon, you know, this isn't Subnautica. This is a modder trying his best, okay? And several dozen unmarked treasures and points of interest for you to find. Like this ship filled with lots of ruined books, and crewmates that apparently died on the spot as if this were some kind of nuclear explosion. This guy didn't even have time to let go of the goddamn steering wheel. True crewmates they were. Lots of literal treasure. The inability to actually pick them up, however, irked me so and dented my immersion temporarily. I also found a dead dragon under the water. But then I realized this was one of the dead dragons that stalks you everywhere you go. Why? Why are you here? Leave me alone, please! And finally, you can even witness Horker migrations, which honestly was more terrifying than fascinating, and unlike the treasure that I couldn't loot, left a permanent dent in my immersion. That being said, I'm in love with the idea of expanding the underwater world. The possibilities are literally unlimited. Can somebody make Atlantis, please? I've been talking about this Atlantis mod since like 2012, and can we get a marriable Ariel in Skyrim, please? Right, just send that to me in private. Don't let my girlfriend know. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave down below, what would you like to see underwater? And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Looking for some cheap games? Check out G2A.com and use the code MXR to get 3% cash back. Link down below.